so I'm in the shop again and I'm looking at the setup over here of trimmers and edges and all that stuff. And a few months ago, uh, I went ahead and replaced the head on this trimmer here. It was on the hedger trimmer thing right here. So I swapped one of these small ones with a bigger head and that worked out really good. And that got me thinking I ought to do the same thing with my two edgers here because I prefer the straight shaft a whole lot more because it's efficient. Yeah, I mean, it puts the power right down and it doesn't take as much room on the racks to where it folds in. It kind of gets in the way a lot of times. It's kind of obtuse and awkward for us. And But we like the way this one starts up and runs a lot better than this one. Not to mention this uh, engine is a lot lighter. So what I was thinking, because the curve shaft requires more power, I would put the bigger engine on this one and put the smaller one on the more efficient straight shaft and see if I can do that. And I think that might work out a lot better because we like the way this one starts up real good. This one is kind of finicky sometimes. It needs a lot of warm up, but so that's what I'm doing today. So I got them side by side here. Uh, full disclosure, I've never done this before, so I'm gonna attempt to do this. Hopefully the curve shaft and this is the same on that end. Uh, I'm gonna figure it out. But this one is a 2008 model HEZ 2610F. And it's a curve shaft. It's a 25cc. I don't know if you can see that with the glare. And yeah, it's a 2020 model. I'm sorry, a 2000, 2008 model. This one is a 2020 model. And it's a 29cc, so it's a big, much bigger engine. It doesn't look physically bigger, but it is. <laughs> it's a lot heavier. And this is the HEZ 3060S. And this, this edge is very powerful, but like I said, it's just, just hard to start sometimes and it has to warm up a lot. Whereas this one, you know, two cranks and you're ready to go. And we've been having this joker for a long time and it it's just very reliable. So let's get started. So in case you're wondering why the paint on this looks so good compared to that one, a while back I took the cover off and spray painted it red. I like to do that with my equipment every every so many years, you know, to get faded looking like that. It only took, you know, two, three years for that to get faded, so. So I'm going to use a, a crescent to help break them. That one wasn't too tight. Like I said earlier, I uh, I swapped the heads on my hedge trimmer and my regular trimmer a while back. I'll put a card up here if you wanted to check that out. That worked out pretty good. It was pretty easy. Hopefully this will come right out. filter 
now. So if I had to guess, this engine is probably equivalent to the 260 that, that is now available with Red Max. All right. That should give me a little bit more slack. I'll just leave it like this and see if I can get away with it. Oh, yeah. So I'm actually going to have to disconnect this to put it on that one. So let me try and do that. Several bad puns later. Alright, so I'm going to have to disconnect the, the cable here on the carburetor and to do that, if you pull the trigger, you see it pulls in. Once you pull it in, just get like a screwdriver or something and push this all the way and you'll see this little nugget pop out right here, this little keeper. You just pull it up like that to release it. And then you can just pull the cable right out. The next thing is these, the kill and start wire right here. They got these two uh, connectors. What you want to do is grab you some pliers on each end. You don't want to just yank on those because it'll it may break. So. I'm gonna lay it like this. And grab it with some pliers on one end, pliers on the other. That actually came out really easy. So did that one. Sometimes they're so tight you can't do anything with it. Alright, so that's it. On that one, and this is the shaft that's on the curved shaft. As you can see, it's a lot different. I'm gonna keep that right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take that one apart and see if I can put it on that one. Do the same thing. Do the same thing here. Gonna have to pull the cable and the wires off of the carburetor. Now this air filter is probably gonna be pretty dirty, so don't judge me. I got a new one. That's what I'm gonna do right now, actually. Well, I got it off. Not too bad, but it's not too good either. We're going to put a new one. A 
just a model number in case you're looking for that filter. See in frame, yep. So this one has a little protective cover that you can just pry up ever so gently, like so. And the same thing. Uh, let's see, are you in frame? Yeah. As you can see, when you pull the trigger, what you want to do is do that and then hold this piece in place, then pull the cable out. There's also a little keeper right here to keep that cable stuck in there, so I'm going to pull that out. Yep. So that's what that looks like. That's what that looks like right there. So, let's see if I can get this out. As soon as I find my needle nose pliers, there they are. I'm going to just do that. Put a screwdriver in it. And as you can see, it'll just come right out. And then you can just pull it out. Like so. Gonna unplug these wires. Ah. See what I mean? This one's tight. Let's see if we can pull this apart now that I have all three of these loose. There it goes. All right. All right, so that's different. That's kind of cool. Huh, it's like a, a loaded spring inside of there, keeping pressure on it, I guess. Maybe uh, adjust the vibration. I don't know. But that shaft should, should line right up with the other head, so I'm going to try it out. Inside of this one has a square shaft. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I guess I'll pull this off and see if I can swap that part over. I don't know if 
you can see that there's got a square inside of there. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, so I could probably just change this housing. Can you see through there? Okay, it's hard to see, but that one has the star inside. What's the problem? There you go. So I'm gonna mask this off right here. Paint this. I just use something like this. It doesn't have to be the fusion kind, but I'm trying that out. And it goes on, good news. I guess I can crank it and see if it's working.
I think the idle needed to be turned up a little bit because of the the load is different compared to the Kershaw. y'all so i got it swapped out it's all working put it back together touched it up with some paint so it doesn't look quite so faded but as you can see right here and right here there is a difference with this housing this one needs to go further in so the cover could go over it and this one needs to come out so it doesn't hang over it so much and you can't just swap the two red covers because the back side doesn't line up the right way. It's got two bolts instead of one on one side versus the other. Another thing right here, there's a hole where that bolt used to go into that shaft. It's no longer there because it's sideways, different design a little bit. So I put some silicone over that hole there. So dirt and debris and water doesn't get into the shaft. I'm gonna keep an eye on that, make sure that stays dry and sealed but other than that i think it's going to be fun i tried it and no vibrations it works pretty good uh as i expected the lighter head on the straight shaft it's a little heavy on this end because you know it's it's not as heavy as this engine used to here but i don't think that's going to be a problem because most of the time when i'm carrying it around i'm rolling it on the wheel on that end so I'll maybe do an update pretty soon and see if I can do a comparison, if it feels any different. But I think it's going to work out. Y'all take it easy.